welcome back to the Student Hub Live. Okay, you've all been chatting a lot about note taking, so this is your session all about note taking. And joining me is Suzanne Newcomb. Now, Suzanne is a lecturer in religious studies and she's currently writing a chapter on Buddhism, which means that she is having to go back to all her undergraduate notes that she took many moons ago. Probably not that many moons ago, Suzanne. <laughs> <Feels like it. laughs> Um, so I'm hoping these notes are useful to you. Our students have been talking today um, in our reading session about how they're using notes sometimes to make sense of things. Now, we wanted this session to be quite different because, of course, whilst you might do the two concurrently, we found out from Azuma that there's more to reading than just physically reading and there's more to note-taking than just physically writing things down. They both have very different purposes. And what we've been talking about in terms of time management, in terms of reading, and now note taking, is that there are strategies. Like there's some stuff that works, and we're going to show students some of the stuff that we find works, in the hope that they can pick a few of those bits up um, and start maybe using it in their own studies as well. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good. So we'd like you to fill in our widgets, which are where do you do your best thinking about your OU course? Now, if you're a new student, this could be hypothetical or it could just be about where you do your best thinking. There's a range of options, so select the one that uh, suits you. Uh, walking the dog doesn't necessarily have to be um, a four-legged hound. It, it could be stroking the cat because other pets are available, as I've been told. Um, and also, how do your um, de ideas develop most naturally? So what sort of things? We've heard about people taking notebooks to bed, etc. But what works well for you? So let us know and we'll see what's most popular. Of course, when you vote, you'll see what everyone else thinks also. So Suzanne, what's the purpose then of taking notes? Well, there's lots of different purposes. It really depends on what your purpose is. One of the, one of the things is what Azuma talked a lot about is having a dialogue with what you're reading or having a dialogue if you're at a um, tutorial to just think about what your tutor is saying as, as they're lecturing. And then you've got kind of notes to ask questions about when you, when you need to have a dialogue. But it's also about capturing your thoughts and your insights and intuitions, um, particularly if you're doing a social science or humanities course, um, because your tutors really want to know what you think, what you've understood, and how you answer the question. If you're doing a more um, science-based or language-based, your notes might be about what are the most important things to remember, and they might be really the start of kind of memorization note cards. So it really depends. And if you're, if you're working on a really big project, um, a, a longer essay like an EMA, then you might just want to collect interesting things as you go along. And they may or may not be useful when you actually sit down to write, but it'll help your thinking if you're, if you're not forgetting all the time. <laughs> Now, what were your notes like when you were an undergraduate? So the things you're having to sort of re go back and revisit. I found some of my old notes and some of them I was very, very proud. In fact, I was impressed <laughs> with some of them. Like when I was doing biological psychology, I got a big brain and I'd try and, you know, relate everything to everything because it was all over the place in terms of the book because we were talking at different levels. And I was trying to use notes to contextualize that. Some of it is appalling. And I look at that and think I was just copying from the book. What good was that when I've got the book still? Yeah, absolutely. So have you noticed a shift in your own? Notes. I noticed a shift. Well, this this is one of my introductory notes um, from from when I was an undergraduate um, for a live lecture, and I used lots of different colours. And Azuma was talking about you can tilt colours it forward a bit, for so, uh, yeah, colours yeah. for different. Um, you could be really organised in your colours. I just used different colours, I think, to help me stay awake. <laughs> um, but it it was really helpful. And going back, thinking about an introduction to Buddhism. Um, looking at my notes from nearly 20 years ago has helped me realize what I've remembered and what the key points are. And it, I was never expecting to use it for that when I took the notes. I was just hoping to pass the exam. <laughs> but um, you can be surprised at how they reflect your processing and your understanding and what, what really was what you took in. I was a bit disappointed because I remember drawing um, a beautiful bird about insight and compassion being the two sides of, um, of an aspect of, of of Buddhist thinking, and I was—I've been scouring my notes to find that beautiful bird, but I still remember the bird. Although I can't find the bird. <laughs> but it's part of note taking. I mean, it's about being able to trace back. Like we were talking earlier about how you're not expected to remember everything. You will never remember at the end of your qualification, six years on or whatever it is, you're not going to remember what you did in, in week one, day one, etc. But you might want to know what sorts of things you did and how you might be able to trace back to it if indeed it's something that you might want to link further on. Because often we're scaffolding ideas. Absolutely, absolutely. And the notes you take at the beginning of a course you might you know taking can be a way of revising for your exams as well so um, one of my colleagues in the religious studies department was talking about these these mind maps which we can talk about more later but it, you kind of it, it's kind of a, um, a, a, a I'll hold it up, yeah you yeah. hold it, it it's a, a visual way of um, 
you can get away from just having a linear sense of notes or having to know what to say. You just put words in bubbles and think about how they connect to each other. And my colleague was saying he was ready for the exam when he could get everything he knew about a subject onto one A4 sheet in this method. Um, and then he knew that he could kind of get it in his head no matter what the question might be. Um, so it, 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 there's, there's many, many ways of, of taking notes. And I think we'll go through a, a few different options. Um, but a lot of it's about capturing what, what is in your head, what you're thinking about, what's your understanding. So it's very personal. And the way technology is changing so much, I think we all need to reassess what strategies we're using and kind of reflect. Because when I was an undergraduate, there, there weren't um, audio recorders. There weren't, I, I took lots of notes on little note cards like library catalogs. And I still kind of think in that way. But now we've got apps that you can, you can just jot something down on your phone. You can walk along and, and talk in your phone and if you, if you don't have a pen and paper. Or, I, I mean, it's still something really important about using your hands to record. And I think that that helps you, mem you, you remember what you're doing in a different way than typing. So thinking about what works for you and what your purpose is. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I, and I guess it's one of these things, we're going to talk about writing in your own words a bit later, but I remember thinking, you know, sometimes there was a sort of idea that there had to be some sort of parity between what was in the book and what, what were in my notes. And it was only much later that I realised that sometimes it took someone a lot of words to explain something very, very complex, mm. almost like riding a bike, that once I'd got, I sort of, yeah, that's fine, I get that, even though it was a lot of words. And it's this whole sort of, I guess, rehashing and repurposing things and making sense of it. Um, that, that means that they don't always have to happen in parallel. No, absolutely, absolutely. And, and how you think is, um, you need to work with how you think. When I was an undergraduate, I had the luxury of having this big blank wall, and I'm sure some of you do have that luxury and some of you don't, but I used, um, I used kind of the post-it notes yeah. and just wrote things down and moved them around so that I, I was kind of visualising my essay in, a, in not a written down structure, but, but what are the ideas, what do I want to include, and sometimes things would go over there because I thought they were important, but now they're not. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think note-taking is really a process of unpacking your thinking, trying to record what you might want to remember, and making your study work for you. Yeah. Um, in, in whatever your purposes are. And you might not know exactly what you're going to use it for later. It might be very directed towards your nearest assignments, your nearest um, EMA, your nearest exam, or it might be just kind of, this is interesting. I don't know how I'm going to use it, but I might come back to it later. Yeah. A lot of students will use a notebook or a reflective journal or a combination of the two even to take notes. But you're saying that a lot of it is about, I guess, doing the reading and maybe annotating in the way that Azuma was talking about before. But there needs to be maybe some sort of gap, and it's this thinking gap between the internalizing of the stuff and then thinking about what might be important and so we'd ask people where they did their best thinking about their OU courses um, and also where their ideas developed most naturally. Now the answers are quite interesting. 68% um, which was the top figure said that they do their best thinking about their OU course at their desk at home. The other options were in a library while cooking dinner, working at the kitchen table or while walking the dog, which incidentally came up as the second best option, which I, <laughs> I often find a really good space to think. You don't, you don't have to have a dog to go for a walk. No, exactly. <laughs> but, but it helps. Um, and then we also asked about um, how they develop ideas most naturally. Now, this was very, very interesting. Of the options, which you would have thought that writing lists with pen and paper would come up most highly, that only got 22%. Our most popular way of developing ideas is talking to yourself. Mm. So we can see the poll here um, on the screen. Um, so talking to yourself is, is way in the lead. Other people, 24%. And perhaps this is a way that you can um, talk to family and friends. In fact, often I'll say to somebody, can I just talk to you about what I'm trying to do? Or can you read what I've written? And they say, but I don't know anything about it. And I say, but that's brilliant because you shouldn't. <laughs> because if I haven't explained this to you, I'm not doing my job. I want you to spot the gaps. So tell us then about this sort of, I guess, space then between the, the learning and the note taking. And as you say, recording what you may need to remember or, or the point that you may or may not know what the purpose of it is. Well, I, I think that that's the talking to yourself or, or talking to someone else is really interesting and it can be a really good intermediary step between note taking and actually writing your essay. And some of the modules now have oral assignments where people are asked to express themselves orally. And some students actually 
do much better at that than they do on their essay writing. And with all the modern technology, you can now really harness that as a, like a preliminary note taking for your your written work. If you if you just record your conversation with your friend, or you can walk along um, with your phone and pretend you're talking to someone and just record your thoughts. And then when you listen back to them, you can capture them and structure them in an essay much um, much more efficiently than if you just stare at the blank page. I think staring at the blank page is the hardest part of writing an essay, yeah. <laughs> once you've got something to change. Um, but the, 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 I think it's about notes while you're reading. You might just take, as Azuma was saying, you might take notes to, to stay awake. <laughs> I shouldn't <laughs> say that, but I, I certainly did that as an undergraduate. Yeah, yeah. But you might, you might take notes because you don't understand it. You're trying really hard to understand. And that's just an element of active critical thinking at, in your study. And then you go back and take notes differently at a different time when you're, you're working for a different purpose. And you, so you have different sets of notes. You refer back and forth. Yeah. And um, you need to be flexible about yeah. how you're doing that and keep thinking of, is this the best way? Because yeah. um, I, I get stuck and know I did that last time, but actually I might think better somehow differently for this project. Yeah, no, exactly, because often when you're rehashing ideas or reconstituting things, sometimes you can miss some of the important things that you might need. Absolutely. And so verbalising those things, explaining them to other people, can identify some of those gaps. Yeah, I was asking HJ to read something the other day, and I said, actually, this is the argument I've got. And he's like, well, it's not really apparent here. And then I thought, actually, I'm just too close to it. I need to sort of take a step back. Speaking of HJ, um, welcome, Kester. I see that HJ's finally got a break. Um, so you're joining us on the hot desk. And uh, earlier, everyone was talking about note-taking. We couldn't get a word in for our reading. So uh, is note-taking still the uh, topic of conversation on our hot de desk, yeah. Zach and uh, Esther? Kester. It is. Uh, also with cake as well. There's some people talking about eating <laughs> cake. Um, but yeah, there's some interesting ideas. Um, Katrina said about making mind maps and writing in learning outcomes to keep on track and going back and rereading the notes after a few hours. Um, someone else has mentioned about if you're a um, remembering notes writing the words in the shape of an animal, draw a fish, write the words along the outline, and that's a helpful way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, interesting ideas. Yeah, um, and we've had, apart from cake, uh, a lot of note-taking, highlighting. Um, Justin was talking about making uh, study cards to help him remember keywords and descriptions. Um, so yeah, a lot of good ideas and a lot of people engaging with the session. It's brilliant. It's good stuff. Thank you. And I hear Taylor puts post-it notes all over the house, but why on the ceiling? I mean, I don't even know if I can reach it. I certainly can't reach it in here. <laughs> we'll come back to that, Taylor. It sounds like an interesting idea. Um, I used to, when I was revising for exams, I used to go and have a wall for memory, a wall for attention, a wall for this, that and the uh, other. Right, and yeah. I, I would physically look at spaces. And I love that idea about writing notes in the shape of things. In fact, one of my notes that I was trying to find that I'd thrown away, I was so proud of. I'd drawn all these diagrams and I could see it in my mind. Because for me sometimes, I mean, my notes have never been very wordy. Like often mm. I'll draw things. So I'll draw like an attentional spotlight or I remember, you know, the, the cocktail effect by drawing a cocktail and, and a cherry on it who was the originator of the theory. And I, I would sort of make these pictures in my mind as I was taking notes. And I always found that more useful, especially for exams when I had to remember lots of stuff. Absolutely. So do notes have to involve words? I mean, people have been talking about mind maps and things. What, what, what are your thoughts? Well, of? I, think, I think if you can draw, it doesn't, you don't have to be an artist, but often, like I said, I, I remembered that bird I drew <laughs> as an undergraduate, and that really stuck in my head, or your cocktail yeah. thing. And as, as you were saying before, quite often the central ideas of what you want to say are actually really concise, but they take a long time to justify, to provide the evidence, to show that you can put it in, contact, in context in your course materials. So your notes um, it probably will involve some words, um, but they don't have to be many words. Don't feel like if you're not taking many words, you're not doing a good job of t taking notes, because actually it might be better if you've really got the key points um, and, and you can have a very short outline of what, what you engaged with in a deep way. Well, we've heard from Taylor, who says the best ceiling is the bathroom, so that uh, one can lie in the bath, which I think is a glorious way of studying. In fact, I remember when I first got into, um, I used to like, sometimes I didn't get the material, so I used to go on YouTube and I used to like listen to all these videos mm. and lectures. I discovered the Institute of Psychiatry lectures, which I was uh, brilliant. So I used to go hour long lecture in the bath, put my laptop on and do that. So studying in the bath is great. OK, but, but sometimes these notes, I mean, especially if you've got an exam and not all students will have an exam, but notes don't always have to be the notes. Often 
often we'll revise them, we'll sort of try and draw things together, in particular maybe when we're planning for assignments. So when you've got the initial notes, how do you then go about revising them? And what then if they don't sort of make sense? You know how you, sometimes you look at something and you're like, I, I don't really understand what I mean by that. How do you go back and forwards using the notes as some sort of linking? Well, if they don't make sense, I wouldn't worry about it too much because there's part of part of note taking is about the process, and it's not about having a, an outcome. So even if they didn't make sense now, they they helped in your process to get where you are now. So I would just start again if it's not making sense. Start read your assignments, read what what is your purpose now, and start brainstorming. Start thinking about what you read that might be relevant and. Just skim it. Um, there's lots of different ways of reading, but, but when you skim it, you might find those few highlighted points or um, headings, if you didn't do highlighting, that, that really jump out as being relevant. Um, sometimes the, the quotes that Azuma was talking about, uh, she highlights things she might want to quote later. That's a good way of starting to, to structure an essay. But then you also need to balance that with, with writing your own words, which um, I know you're going to talk about later. So notes can be the, the potential quotes you're going to use, and then you frame that around your own words. Why is this relevant? Why is this um, interesting? How does it develop the answer to the question you're doing? Um, and I, I, I think that um, it's about a, a, just a process to, to keep, keep in the mind of there's not a single answer. You can go back, look at it. If what you have now isn't right, just rework it, go for a walk, yeah. talk to your partner, um, do something different. Because of course, unless you come on the Student Hub Live, no one's ever going to see your notes. <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, they're, they're yours and, and they're part of your thing. And you know, when we were sort of talking about um, how you were taking notes in your undergraduate, trying to keep awake in lectures, trying to use different things, I bet you use different sorts of strategies and things now, and possibly for different purposes as well. What advice would you give to students? In particular, you know, we've got conscientious students out there, they're all logging on, they're all getting ready and, and getting early um, and, and excited about their studies. What advice would you give students about playing with different techniques and, and not worrying too much if the notes aren't brilliant? Because I used to be so worried that they wouldn't be good enough. I used to want to go to my tutorials with them all nicely written and I never felt that they were quite suitable for showing. And then I didn't realise actually that no one was interested in no, them. They were mine. Absolutely. They're, they're just for you. And when I was younger, I had, an, I had the luxury of studying full time. And so I had the time to write nice long notes. But now as an adult, I'm, it's more about capturing my thoughts when I've got five minutes to actually think and no one's interrupting me at home and, and something I'm writing comes to mind is how do I make sure that I don't forget that and it gets in my notes for tomorrow when I sit down at the desk. So I think it's really about um, it, it just being flexible and not worrying about it being perfect. It just has to be useful yeah. and and trusting yourself that your insights, your what you remember is important and is interesting because at the end of the day, this is about you. It's not about the person in the, who wrote the book. Yeah, yeah, We want to know your understanding and how it's going to change your thinking. Now increasingly people are getting hold of technology as a way of facilitating their learning and, and, and no surprise at the Open University where it's all distance we've got a lot of people who, who really like technology and time management apps and various ways of taking notes we were talking about one note earlier can work for certain people. Um, the other, like, I mean last night in the middle of the night I had an idea and I just used my phone to record it because I couldn't be bothered getting up and writing something down and we've heard of people writing things by their beds. How much of note taking has to be note taking and how much of it is about recording these processes and do you ever use other technologies or maybe voice or other ways of sort of capturing those thoughts so that there's something that you can go back to because like you say sometimes you do get that moment where you think I can see how it all relates together, I can see the angle that you've got here um, and it's those moments when you're walking the dog when you've thought through things that can really just be, be that nugget in that assignment. Absolutely, and I, I think we've talked about quite a few ways of doing it, recording on your phones is so easy now. You could have just a little notebook you're carrying around with you, and um, you could have the notes by your bed, which definitely helps you sleep if you suddenly have a to-do that comes yeah. to mind, or a, a brilliant idea if you can just write it down. But I think the other challenge is kind of a, a way of filing, a way of making sure you come back, can find those notes again. Mm. So even though I make recordings on my phones, remembering to come back to them. So I think that there needs to be a certain amount of discipline to make it useful. Yeah. So when you do come back to your desk, um, do you come back to your study? If you just spend like two minutes thinking, can I put the notes in a place in a file for this TMA and a file for this book, um, just so that I can come back to them and find them again. And so I've, I've got the folders. I was able to find my folder for yeah. 
undergraduate. But it, it, it doesn't take too much, but you need a bit of filing to be able to come back to it for your assignment and then and then redo notes. Um, and I guess it's knowing, like sometimes I'll write a note and I have piles, um, so sometimes I'll chuck it on that pile and the post-it note or the note I've taken will be really important to do something, but it's not important to write down and keep because it's a thing I've done that once is done. So some notes don't have that sort of time. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and no. it's about recognising, I guess, when you need stuff to go back to and when you don't. And, it, and you'll get it wrong, and that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. You, you might have a better idea um, when you've lost your notes. No, absolutely. So there are some um, online resources which you can take a look at on the website. There's some skills for study, um, and there's a great critical thinking um, booklet, which is really good bridging the gap between reading and note-taking. Again, thinking about the whole purpose of what you're trying to look at. So so do take um, a look at the resources page um, and there are lots of other skills for you study. Now Zach you'll be very familiar with this because in addition to uh, your student uh, studies, you're working at the Student Hub Live, um, you also work at the student support team so you'll know a lot about pinpointing students in the right direction. Do you want to give us a quick outline of, of how students might go and seek further information about these things if they want to? Yeah definitely, I mean there's lots of things that you can do um, outside your module website and speaking to you tutor to, to give you tips in terms of note taking. Um, there's a lot of stuff on the help centre and student home um, and also kind of approaching uh, your tutor about specific areas that you might want further um, kind of assistance on when writing notes. I know um, uh, Sophie said in terms of note taking what, what, what areas to really kind of focus in on because sometimes you'll be writing notes and maybe just annotating and, and kind of writing and, and, and going and sometimes it can be hard for students to pinpoint exactly what areas they should be writing notes on. So, you know, I'd just say approach shooter, they can help you focus in on where to go and use the resources on, on, on the website and also just to get in touch with your student support team as well if you need it and we can uh, put some support in place and help out there. Brilliant, lovely. Kester, do students often call about um, study skills to the student support team or do they tend to focus on more on problems and things? They come to you a lot for advice. Yeah, uh, a lot of it's to do with life getting in the way and we try and give our advice on how best to help them out, refer them to a tutor or sometimes they do get problems and we have to give them advice to them. But sometimes, yeah, with study skills as well, we sort of refer them to the uh, help centre which has a lot of useful tips. Yeah. So, yeah. There, there is loads. I mean, to be fair, the Open University have amazing resources, um, but often it's taking the time to go and do them and sort of, I guess, carving that time out. But one of the, the things that we were talking about very early on in terms of the time management is that these skills are so important early days, aren't they? Mm. You know, if you learn how to take notes and you learn ways that work for you, even if you learn to pick things up and put things down in terms of trying a new idea and maybe it doesn't work, that experimentation can really set you up, can't it, for later life? Absolutely. And being relaxed about just going with what works for you because it's about it's about what works for you it's not a right way or a wrong way and it might be different than your best friends so and I'm, I'm still learning I'm still changing the way I take notes and doing it differently oh glad to hear well Suzanne thank you so much for coming along and speaking of relaxing and friends I'm really pleased to see that you've all been helping each other so much in the chat I hope that you realize actually that in helping people you know you've got a lot more skills than you may have thought you had um, and sharing advice is so important for new students I hope you're all feeling a lot better now than you did at the start of the day also um, and that you've enjoyed meeting each other there's some great tips in terms of calming down and um, like yoga although Jeanette, I hope you're not doing the yoga right now, although you could be. There's no problem with that. You can do whatever you like. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to show you a little bit about what happens in our online rooms. These are our tutorial systems. And our next guest, Isabella, is going to come and talk to us about how you can get involved digitally, although you are right now, but in a more formal context, so things like tutorials. And then after her session, she's going to have a workshop in the online room where you can talk to each other um, and say hello to Isabella um, and chat in that slightly different environment. So we'll show you a quick video and then I'll be back to talk about joining in digitally with Isabella.